and welcome. I'm Lloyd and this is the Dressing Gown Diary. It's a preview show of round three of the 2016 Six Nations. So much had happened in, in round two. There were competitive matches across the board. So what we're going to do in this show, I'm going to go piecemeal through each team on the, the games they're playing at the weekend and how they performed the weekend before or two weekends before in the previous round. So it all kicks off this weekend at 8.05 on Friday night. It's Wales against France. Both teams still have aspirations of the title. France have now, on the back of two wins, uh, Wales found a way to win against Scotland. Now, there's a couple of key stats here. Wales have only ever won one match on a Friday night. Uh, and this was against France two seasons ago, where they actually dominated them. But they're actually, they've won four on the bounce against uh, France. The last time they lost was in the semi-final of the 2011 World Cup. But... What, what Wales really have, though, at the moment is a lack of a cutting edge. They don't seem to know how to score tries. Yes, George North scored a great try against Scotland, but too many of the backs have lost the ability to be able to fix players and pass the ball on into space. Yes, I know Jamie Roberts is a big battering ram, but it seems that our, the, the Welsh focus is way too much on defence and not enough on attack. It's kind of a split 60-40 defence against uh, attack. That We don't want to break the line. We want to keep our shape. We want to keep structure, all of these kind of things. But actually... It's about scoring tries, it's about stretching the opposition and putting them in positions that they don't want to be in and, and finding mismatches by, you know, fly halves, uh, exposing props that are in the line uh, with quick guys running around them, etc. So, you know, my question actually for Wales is what does Robert Howley do? What, what evidence is there as you as an attack coach? What are you bringing to the table that makes Wells an attacking force? Certainly with the players like uh, Leah Williams, who's forgotten the ability how to pass, George North, uh, Jonathan Davis. You've got ball players there who can make ground, score tries, but it doesn't seem to be happening at the moment. So moving on to France. Well, France scraped through against Ireland. They really did. Ireland, Ireland had the game for the taking, but somehow France scraped through. It's, it, you know, we're... Have they really got a? Have they really defined how they want to play at the moment? What you know, if you look at their game, they've made more offloads than any other team in the tournament so far. Most of those were against Italy, where they were expansive to start with, and as soon as the game got tight, they tightened up massively. You know, is there is there an impact of the way the the super the, the teams in France are playing their league games? Is that an issue that they can't? Are defensive too tight? Some of the chat that's coming out this week has been about Gatland about how defence is so tight there isn't room for for players to manoeuvre in. So, what kind of French team will show up? Well, you know, no one still no one knows what kind of French team. What's the what? what how are they going to define themselves? Are they going to play ball ball? Are they going to be tight? Are they going to put big guys into it? But certainly, it promises to be an electric atmosphere on a Friday night in Cardiff. While there are transport problems getting there, it's, it's all good fun. There are a lot of people going. They'll all enjoy it. So the next match of the weekend really is a battle between the two losers. It's the second tier of rugby at the moment in terms of the Six Nations. It's Italy against Scotland. You know, to put it in perspective, Italy have lost the last six in Rome. Scotland going to the game on the back of nine straight losses in the Six Nations. This really is a scrappy, scrappy affair. To put it, you know, some more stats for you. Italy have won four out of the last six times that Scotland have been in Rome. That's almost getting you know, dominant. And the two that they lost, they lost by a cumulative four points. Since 2004, this game has only been decided by one score. Most, uh, most matches, we have six points, three points, three points, four points, seven, one. It's very, very tight. Now, have Scotland improved, though? They played a lot better against Wales. They opened up, but then they got, they got themselves into a position where they might win the game. Basically, bricked themselves. They didn't really know how to, comp how to compose how to play tight ball, how to retain possession. They started looking nervous. I mean, on that point, the, the, the line-out for Scotland really wasn't functioning. And this is where I get angry at the Wales attacking platform because, yes, Wales have uh, like to keep the ball in play. They like to kick long. They like to ask you to counter-attack. But when the line-out's clearly not functioning, start playing like Ireland, kick into the 22 and say, you defend from there. And actually, one of the tries came from a knockback that Greg Laidlaw had to then uh, had to then ground in the tries in the tries in the dead ball area so yeah, being able to adapt is a crucial thing I mean it, Italy were unlucky against England they were in the game until they conceded a turnover that passage of play left to the in, it led to the interception try all the legs had gone by then and yes Jonathan Jovis scored a hat-trick of tries but was that really reflective of how the game went England were in it uh, in a test match for a long time but then Italy just ran out of steam a little bit 
So uh, the final game of the uh, of the weekend, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the uh, dressing gown diary viewers will view this as the big one. It's uh, England against Ireland. It's of course Eddie Jones's first home match. Now, if you listen to some of the stuff he's been coming out this week, clearly maths isn't his strong point because he can't decide whether Ireland kicks sixty percent of the ball, seventy percent of the ball. I mean, if you ask him today, he'll probably come up with another answer. All of this is just trying to dispel and, and move away attention from an England team that, yes, they are growing, but all they've done to date, though is beat the two sub-teams in this competition. Yes, they've beaten Italy. Yes, they've beaten Scotland. But come on. You know, the, the other four teams in it are far more progressive. Far, you know, the other three games England would have to play, they're much harder tasks. Where are Ireland, though? They'll be, they'll be smarting from the fact that they didn't win against uh, France. That, was their, that game was there for the taking. And they're carrying injuries. Can they support those injuries? Now, this is something Wales managed to do in the World Cup, where they absorbed those losses of the team and still progressed out of the quarterfinal, which is something, of course, England didn't manage to do. Come on! So what kind of game are we going to expect? Well, clearly, it depends on the weather, but it looks good at the moment. So Ireland will, will try and lift the ball. The, uh, there's, uh, Ijojo's coming in. He's a talented player for England. Uh, is there a future? Of course there is. He, he seems athletic. He changed the pace of the game when he came on against Italy. So there, there, are, certainly, there are certainly opportunities that uh, England do look like they're going in the, in the right direction. But this is their first real test. Ireland on the back of uh, a draw and a loss... Um, it's, a, it's, a ma- it's a massive call whether they can step up and find the way to win at uh, Twickenham against uh, a buoyant England and no doubt a buoyant Twickenham crowd so we move on to the final element of this dressing and diary this week it's Freddie's flutter and this is a really really hard call because he, in simple terms Wales are favourites to beat, uh, beat France on, on Friday night Scotland are favourites to beat Italy and England are favourites to beat Ireland none of these really excite me you know, actually, I think uh, I, I would go with backing Ireland, and I think you can get up to ten and a half points maybe on the spread. I'd back Ireland to beat England. Ten and a half points, I think it, that game's going to be tight whatever happens. I, I, England will win, but I don't think they'll win by more than that point. So, for now, this is the Dressing Gown Diary. Best of luck watching your six halves of rugby over and out. <laughs>